Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, I wanted to uh, uh, talk about high fidelity web archiving and, uh, and do a, a quick demo of, of some of the tools that uh, I've been working on. And so I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and, and start. Uh, so uh, I want to talk about, so I work on a project called Web Recorder. And uh, the idea with uh, Web Recorder is to, is sort of, uh, her motto is web archiving for all. So the idea is to allow anyone to create uh, web archives of exactly what you see in your browser and to archive them at full fidelity. Uh, and so um, kind of just very briefly, what else, uh, some of the goals of the web recorder project uh yeah it's basically to focus on on uh capture and, and replay uh and and archive things as, as as accurately as possible uh all the tools are fully open source and uh another key goal of course is to make uh web archiving more accessible uh by uh, decentralized technologies uh and uh so uh uh, kind of to start, what is web archiving and, and what does it mean to actually save a page and view it later? Uh, so you might think that, well, there are kind of some obvious approaches to start with, uh, including, um, for example, the browser Save Page As. Uh, so every browser has that, uh, and you can go to, to a page uh, and, and, and try to save a page. Uh, if you actually do that on on any page that's uh, anything that that is not uh, mostly just a, a static document with HTML, uh, you'll quickly find that uh, what you actually save doesn't generally work very well uh, when you try to load it back up. Uh, part of it is that uh, that doesn't save the, uh, uh, the it doesn't save the network traffic that uh, that got you to that point. It only saves a static snapshot, uh, and it doesn't save uh, any of the state in JavaScript. Um, and oftentimes, uh, modern web pages, which are really uh, complex applications, uh, don't really work when uh, just loaded from, from your local file system. Um, another approach that uh, is often tried is sort of uh, kind of simple crawling and scraping. Uh, you could actually use wget, uh, and you could point it at, at a website, uh, and it'll retrieve that HTML, it'll extract all the links, and it'll repeat. Uh, Personally, but again, there's no no JavaScript run, uh, and you'll find out that uh, you'll get the, the static assets from from a site. But anything that's loaded dynamically, uh, anything that's loaded through, through JavaScript, generally doesn't work. Um, and so these are, are sort of the uh, the what I would call lower fidelity approaches to web, web archiving and. Uh, high fidelity web, web archiving is attempting to archive exactly what you see and hear and do in the browser uh, and uh, essentially to capture the the interactive experience of websites while keeping them interactive uh, and so since modern websites uh, still are made up of uh, kind of http network requests uh, that's basically what uh, what we're attempting to, to capture um, and so for example if we look at a at a uh, so and I'll, uh, so if we look, for example, at a, at a site like Twitter, uh, that is uh, highly dy dynamic. Uh, and you know, if, if we look at the dev tools, for example, we'll see that when we load uh, Twitter, uh, even though it's everything that's that's being loaded is is being served, uh, and and you can actually see the the kind of the, the network requests coming in in dev tools. And so uh, the browser already has this obviously in order to, uh, to create the page. And so what if we're able to capture all of this network traffic and simply recreate it later? Uh, and so that's basically the idea with, uh, with high fidelity web archiving. Uh, and for that, uh, we have a, a browser extension uh, that's available on archiveweb.page. So it's easy to remember and you can actually go to archiveweb.page uh, and from there, uh, if you're using a Chromium-based browser, uh, it'll take you to uh, the Chrome Web Store. You could also download it as a desktop app uh, and uh, run it that way. Uh, and so what this extension does is uh, essentially archive the, the exact network traffic that is being loaded in the browser. Uh, and so before I show that, uh, just very quickly, I'll kind of cover uh, 
So the way that it works is that it archives the all the traffic via the uh, Chrome debug protocol, uh, which is what DevTools also uses, and it stores the data in, in the browser in IndexedDB. And then it can serialize that data into a format, uh, in, into a file format that's downloadable, or that format can really be stored anywhere, including IPFS. And uh, what you could do after you've stored the data, of course, is then to replay them. And uh, replaying websites is actually even harder than actually capturing them. You have to uh, rewrite the URLs and you have to emulate uh, uh, really the, the JavaScript environment. Uh, and it's, it's, it's sort of basically, uh, it's basically a mini, uh, a mini Wayback machine that's running entirely in your browser. And so we won't have time to cover all of that, but uh, that's sort of the, the idea behind this. Uh, and uh, I'll go ahead and start uh, a quick demo. Uh, and so let's say I'm, I'm on a Twitter page here and I have the, the extension installed. And so I can go and uh, I can create, uh, I'll just create a, a new demo here. So I'll call it demo two and I'll click start. And uh, you can see this uh, size counter going up. And so that's actually all of the, all of the network traffic, uh, what we just saw in DevTools being archived uh, into the browser. And so as more things are loading on this, uh, on this Twitter page, uh, you can see this uh, size counter going up. And uh, when uh, basically the, the extension tells you sort of if, if more requests are being loaded or if it's done. And so when it's green like this, that means that's, that it's, uh, it, it's no longer loading anything additional. And so I can kind of sc uh, scroll down and then it'll, it'll start loading additional things and the size counter will go up. And uh, since it's using the debug protocol, it tells me that uh, our web webpage is debugging the browser. This is sort of a, uh, a, Chrome, a Chromium based uh, security setting. So it's, it's, it's always there. Um, I could also click on another page. Let's say I can click on the uh, web recorder homepage uh, and then it'll also archive this page as well. Um, and so let's say I'm done archiving and I can click stop. And then I can go to browse archive and this shows me the two pages that I have just archived. And uh, I can then click on, on each of these. And, and now I'm loading uh, twitter.com um, entirely from, from the network requests that are stored in the browser. And I can basically, so again, what's been archived is exactly what's loaded. So I can kind of scroll down as far as I did before. Uh, it won't let me, it'll probably stop at some point since I, I only went that far. Uh, I can also click on, on this uh, site that, oh, well, maybe that didn't work because there's a redirect, but I can also click on it like this and, and load the, the home page in, in this way. Uh, and so you also notice that when I look at this page, it's, uh, I'm logged in as myself. Uh, so this is my view of, of twitter.com slash webrecord.io, just a web recorded Twitter page, but it's logged in as me. And so uh, this is sort of a unique view of the web. And, and uh, if someone else goes to this URL, they'll see something different because the, it won't be logged in as them or it, it won't be logged in as me. Um, and so, uh, this extension really allows you to archive exactly what you see in the browser uh, and sort of your, your own unique view of the web, which is of course for most social media sites or many sites is, is entirely different for, for each individual. Uh, and uh, then, so what we also have is, uh, is the sharing option. And this is where uh, I can actually go and, and, uh, and click start sharing and, and now um, this archive has been written to IPFS uh, and I'll, I'll cover what that, uh, and I, I can actually, um, why don't I go ahead and uh, paste the link here into the chat so that 
because it might take take a little bit of time. So I'll just go ahead and and uh, uh, let's see here. I'll just stop sharing for a second and paste this link. And uh, it might take a little bit for it to to load. And in the meantime, I'll go ahead and cover. Uh, what is happening here. And so again, the idea is that uh, you can share your unique view of the web with others. And, and so um, so how is this, how is this data actually serialized to IPFS? Uh, and we have a format called WAXI, which stands for Web Archive Collection Zipped. Uh, and it's a zip-based format. Uh, and inside of it, it stores data in another format called WARC, uh, which is a standardized format created by Internet Archive. Uh, and it also stores the uh, raw indices uh, into the data. So we basically have the HTTP request response traffic and an index to look that up, and also a list of pages. Uh, and there's a manifest uh, containing all the files. And a key property of this format is that since it's a zip file, uh, it can be random accessed. And so uh, the idea is that even if you have a large archive, uh, it, you don't have to load everything all at once. And, that, and that's sort of a key requirement for this to, to work. Um, and so what's actually written to IPFS uh, and what's written is actually four files, uh, the index, uh, the uh, uh, a, a service worker, sw.js, and a, a UI file, ui.js. And then the actual archive in this waxy format is also stored uh, in in the as part of the multi-hash. And so, uh, what I just shared in the in the channel is basically a link to this multi-hash that was just created directly in the browser. Uh, and uh, the idea is that uh, so I shared a link to to an HTTP gateway. Um, that's that's one way to to load the data. Uh, there's actually multiple ways to, um, so uh, the, the sharing options uh, include, uh, this is basically the, the sharing menu in the extension. And so it'll uh, basically allows you to, to get the, the multi-hash that was just shared, um, get the, the shareable uh, URL through a uh, replay web page, which is another site that, that's hosted that will then use JSIPFS to load uh, that hash, or you could just get an HTTPS gateway link, uh, which is perhaps the most most compatible, I would say, but not necessarily the fastest. Uh, and uh, here, uh, top is the status. And as you probably noticed, I was using the Brave browser. And the reason for that is that Brave has native support for Go IPFS, which is really great. Um, and so that, allows me to connect to the native Go IPFS uh, daemon that's running, uh, that has been started by Brave. Uh, and currently, uh, the way that this works is that I, I already have to enable it in Brave uh, manually, and then I actually check uh, which port the, the uh, IPFS uh, API server is running, and it's in, on one of these predefined ports, depending whether it's a, a Brave nightly or, or a Brave uh, production release. Um, eventually, I would like to have it so that uh, uh, this is possible to determine through an API. And Brave does actually have this API, uh, Chrome.IPFS, IPFS, uh, for extensions. But currently, it's only available to the IPFS companion. And so I'm I'm working with Brave, and, and they're trying to make that more more generically accessible to to other extensions as well. And that will make this a little bit uh, simpler. Um, so that's sharing in Brave. That that works probably the uh, best. Uh, you could also share in the Electron app, uh, which I didn't show. But there is uh, basically you could download Archive Web as an app, which has uh, essentially the same UI. Um, and this app uh, starts a local IPFS daemon uh, in Node, and so it connects to a local running instance, um, and that that also generally works pretty well. Um, then, of course, the more general use case is if you're using this in Chrome, uh, there are still some some some, uh, some issues to resolve. Of course, since there are no direct P2P connections in 
in Chrome, uh, everything must be served over a, a WebSocket. Uh, there's no WebRTC either because I'm using a service worker. And so it connects to the way that the that uh, basically the way that connecting to IPFS in in Chrome works is uh, basically or in a browser that doesn't have native support is by uh, connecting to, to a preload node, which then loads the, the entire hash uh, essentially as a, as a kind of proxy. Um, and that can be problematic, especially if your archive is very large, uh, that will make it harder to, uh, so essentially have to sync everything that I've just archived over uh, over the, that web socket and also the format the wax designed for random access whereas preloading is, is not and so those are some of the current yeah, limitations one one minute warning to wrap up uh, and then there's some of the, the current uh, limitations of the system uh, is that uh, basically the the preloading isn't yet working as reliably as I would like it to um, when loading over a gateway occasionally there are timeouts since uh, since it's it's making a lot of uh, small range requests, uh, and when using replay web page, it also requires a preload server. Uh, yeah, and that's that's basically it. And uh, maybe I'll also share. Uh, I'll, I'll quickly share another. Uh, so here's another archive that was that was just made earlier, uh, and I'll put it in the chat. Uh, and. Uh, yeah, so that, that's that's basically the the idea is that you can create archives directly in your browser, uh, and uh, and then share share them with others. Uh, if you're using Brave, it works really well. Uh, if you're using Chrome, uh, hopefully we'll we'll have it working better in the in the, in the future, uh, and so you can share sort of your unique view of the web.